Brad, Tier T for Warriors, coming at you with another video. Today's topic, I wanted to get into how you find the right type of doctor, but also kind of the foundational aspects of what's going on in traumatic brain injury. So when you're looking for a doctor, pretty much everything that happens after you've gotten out of an ER, if you didn't get lucky enough to have like a family practice doctor who is trained in ER work, but wasn't just moonlighting, not to jab on our family practice doctors who, doctors who do moonlight, but uh, in any sense, if you're not like a legit ER doctor and you're handling this, right, there's there's stuff that you can do, but there's stuff that you can't do. So, and, and things that you just don't know. And so looking through the different specialties or whatnot, you know, I've kind of identified an area where we've got some work to do in terms of the TBI community in general to then force medical institutions to create specialty. So going through PM&R, physiatrists, and I'll actually give you the definition, because this is this is new to me. I didn't even know this existed until a couple of months ago. So physical medicine and rehabilitation, known as physiatrists, not psychiatrists, but physiatrists, treat a wide variety of medical conditions affecting the brain, spinal cord, nerves, bones, joints, ligaments, muscle tendons. Physicians evaluate and treat injuries, illnesses, disability, and are experts in designing comprehensive patient-centered treatment plans. Physiatrists utilize cutting edge as well as time-tested treatments to manage blah, 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 blah. Um, so I found this like like the 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 pm and r like tbi thing and you know at first so we'll go through it at first i was getting kind of irritated when i was reading it but they, there's a flow to it and there's kind of like a, it's an entry so um their definition of tbi is a disruption of brain function due to an external force or blow to the head resulting in any of the following decreased level of consciousness memory loss before or after an injury alteration of mental status neurologic deficits and intracranial lesion. Okay, so they, they add your little lesion there, which I like. So I was irritated because two, there's a lot of TBIs that one, don't have external force and may have happened from something that was internal. So it, 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 TBI just needs to be identified as inflammation and damage to the brain. Like you don't need the external part of it. Like that's for insurance company stuff, but we're not doing insurance company stuff. And it doesn't change the way you do stuff because you're always going to do a CT scan. So like, that's the point. Um, that's just, it's how TBI works. So like, um, the falls are 35%, unknown is 21%, motor vehicle traffic is 17%. I don't know if that's correct. That seems off to me. Um, assaults are 10%. That can't be right. There's no possible way that's right. That's, that's a wrong number for sure. That's, that's gotta be way higher. Um, penetrating injuries of gunshot wound are less frequent cause. Falls are the most frequent cause in young children, while motor vehicle collisions were the most frequent cause, 15 to 24 years old. Active duty service members who have... Well, active duty. Come on. Uh, <laughs> somebody fucked up when they wrote that. That's not how the military works. You, you were freaking drafted. <laughs> oh, you, you served as a reservist and you, uh, you, uh, your ass was stop lost when you were like a year into your retirement. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> Enjoy Iraq. Uh, percussive brain injury is the most common type of war related TBI. Okay. I do think it was interesting. Some of these numbers may not be updated. I don't know when this was written. Okay, so this is 2015. So the number is like 2.5 million now who are diagnosed. So like this is, the, and, and that and the real number is probably like 5.5 million people or something like that. Um, and let's just throw in like, it's a percentage of the population. So like 10% of the population will have been or will be diagnosed with TBI. Um... Okay, so they go through that. Um, a 
the centers of assessments. I wanted to understand this, like how how do PMNRs think, or, or like how are they being taught how to think about TBI? Because um, this is very important. Because the, the the disconnect with every TBI patient is they go to an ER when they don't know if they're seeing a PA or if they're seeing like it. Also, too, if you're like half awake or you're you know you're in, in an extremely stressed state, right? You're not really looking. Is this person a real doctor? Like a nurse prac? What, you know, what are they, you know, in, in this situation? And when you wake up and you need to know what things need to happen, then you don't know what type of doctor that you're seeing or what type of clinician you're seeing. So you could have like a PA who's just there, right? It's not to say PAs are bad, but they're not doctors. So like they, they only know so much. They can only be taught so much in two years of training. So like just how it works. Um, the following should be assessed when evaluating mechanism of injury, loss of consciousness and duration, associated injuries, residual impairments, information about the available Glasgow coma scales, coma scales to assess severity of injury, early predictors of prognosis, including duration of post-traumatic amnesia, prior functional status, previous psychotic history, psychiatric history? I don't know. Uh, drug and alcohol history, previous history of TBI and social support, okay. physical exam, okay, decent, not the worst, rehabilitation event, exam, all cognitive, behavioral, neurologic, mo mo musculoskeletal impairments, the assessment of neurologic processes, prognosis for recovery, rehabilitation potential, general planning, blah, 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 neurologic examinations, Alertness, arousal, intention, short-term memory, encoding, recall, cranial nerve stuff, reflexes. So if you can kind of grasp like how they're teaching these. So what they did essentially for, for physiatry is they just clobbered together physical therapists, an MD on top of it, and then they'll throw in some brain cognitive stuff. So you can see like how these people think. And... Okay, it's great that it is musculoskeletal and you've got like all this kind of DO, PT, physical, physical stuff. And, you know, I'm kind of going through here. And, you know, when I, when I got to the laboratory tests, I was kind of surprised, but it's almost just thrown in there as an extra credit. Of, of the endocrine piece. So the need for laboratory tests will vary as the patient's acute phase electrical light imbalance. Endocrine abnormality is commonly found. Endocrine testing is recommended in the acute hospitalization only if clinically indicated and then again at three months. Okay, so now I'm glad that I actually read through this whole thing. So that three months, uh, 12 months post-injury thing, that's bullshit. That actually came, I, I read the study, I have it somewhere. That study was done on like, say, 50 or 100 patients or something like that. Super tiny, not controlled, no placebo, not population, not anything credible that can be utilized at all. Because as we know from every TBI patient, well, your hormones will be fucked up. All your stuff's going to be fucked up because it's just how the process works. You got these TBI bad guys who are the, the bad infantry, the tumor necrosis factor alpha and NF cap B, and then your ILA2, ILA6, and all that kind of stuff. And all those little bad guys go after all the good stuff who are out to kill things. That's the whole point of cell destruction signals. So you have to stop the cell destruction signals. So we already know it's going to happen, and that's going to damage the stuff, all the hormones and all the other stuff. So when I read through this, I was trying to understand, like, how do these people think? Where is their mentality? And, and, and watching on YouTube and going through things, it is all... They're just a PT with a fancy name and, and, uh, and a fancy title. And, and let's prove it otherwise. I mean, unless, unless that you can show me that you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, um, doing actual real assessments and not just, okay, cool. You've got all these awesome physical things. You're doing science, okay, in that one aspect. But then as you saw in this other part of focusing on the psychiatry stuff and oh, or the, this and that and, and, and whatnot, Okay, some of the people who may have been on these various drugs could have had a TBI, and then this is also a complication, because then now you're dealing with someone who's, one, on a contraindicated medicine, like a benzodiazepine or SSRI, and it's fucking up their brain already, 
then you have to wean them off of that and get them off of that to then get some stability going. Then two, you're gonna have, also the part of this is like, so the misunderstanding that people who are exhibiting these, okay, you're, you're, you're in stress, you're in fight or flight, you're acting, so you're either angry, you're demanding to go home, there's certain things going on. These are the responses from patients that they're hearing about their loved ones or things that are happening not understanding that those responses are from the inflammation and from the lack of brain steroids. So th this is my big beef with physiatrists where, okay, so you're just, you're, now you're doing the good thing, right? You're not going down the psychiatry route. So you're not just saying that TBI is a psychiatry Ill illness, dump them full of benzodiazepines and just crush them as hard as you can with, with drugs. But then you're not focused on the other part of it, which is super important which is everything else we have to manage in terms of inflammation, neurosteroids, finding this. And this comes to the, the foundational problem of TBI. We don't have a specialty that is gonna manage TBI. We still have to clobber up all these doctors and different differing opinions and stuff like that. And so let's say Dr. Tamara Wexler, for example, she's, both an endocrinologist and a PhD researcher in TBI, whose sole focus has been on growth hormone, which is great. We need singly focused kind of people that do those things, but she is not an expert at the rest, at all the other stuff that has to be managed. So when people will go to her, she's able to handle some of the various big problems that are the the big sticking point in TBI, because she's the expert in that one thing. But then you give her something great. So you give her a dude who has TBI who doesn't have growth hormone, but then testosterone is say, let's even say 800, but slow symptoms. Supposedly that person's safe, but now she doesn't have the experience in just like jamming a bunch of guys with like a gram of testosterone. Oh, okay, these guys look good, we're doing great. Stuff is elevated or whatever on the blood work, but okay, screw it. There's been studies. Gram works, fine, whatever. Every other drug gets to do that. She doesn't have experience, so she doesn't know that. But then she also, as an endo and like a TBI expert, doesn't have the, the other expertise in terms of the physiatry stuff, where she can't just go and do all the DO work or PT work and do physical evaluations, that sort of stuff. She knows the, the general basics. She's still gonna be calling her doctor buddies and asking friends like, how do I do this? What do I do? You know, what, what are these other things that I'm missing that I'm not doing? Because all she does is singly focus. This is the exact example because these physiatrists are being trained to just be doctors of physical therapy and only can manage those certain aspects and don't, the, the bulk of everything else is not on neuroendocrine. Uh, let's see. So what are they saying about mild TBI? Gotta change this name though. I, I know why I know why the academics did it, but it's such a confusing term for people. Mild TBI occurs when direct or indirect force is applied to the brain, for example, through direct contact to the head, whiplash, or via explosion. Mild TBI involves lack of consciousness for less than 30 minutes, other symptoms for up to one day, and no abnormalities of brain injury. Yeah, this is old. I gotta find out when this was written. This has been changed. They don't, this, is, this isn't the official opinion anymore of this because that's obviously not true. It doesn't matter if you have like, loss of consciousness as well. This is where like the, the CTE Foundation people like really screwed up and they were focusing on this whole CTE stuff of like end stage TBI. So you have these fancy researchers doing like uh, pathology brain scan, uh, brain samples of like dead patients and like, oh, look what I found. I found some decrepit tissue in a TBI brain. They didn't have hormones. They're gonna have freaking decrepit tissues with no hormones. Uh, like, does it take any, like, does it take you more thinking than that? Um, and if you would have had the treatment, then you, the, the, oh, but I guess it could also, if you were actually like, doing the real science, then you could, okay, we're gonna do an interventional study. We're gonna get all these people who already know they have like, legitimately terrible TBI. We're gonna pump them full of hormones and like get them like the best treatment they possibly can and then focus on that. And that's where physiatrists could come in and then like 
do an interventional study to do this sort of stuff and then focus on, okay, how can we, if someone's supposedly end stage, well, then what can we do in this year time span to then get them to a point in which either we can like reverse it or then stop a certain part of the destruction of the brain and then focus on like how you can evaluate it after their death. Obviously, it's not being done. And if it's gonna, if it's being done, it's not at a scale that you can even use. But they're just doing all this end stage stuff with the CT Foundation people. And I think it's like Boston Mass College, something of something. Uh, it's like an offshoot of Harvard or something like that. That's like doing doing those like scan stuff, whatever. But um, I do think this is really important, and we have to demand one the doctors get training, and then two that the endocrine society just goes the fuck away and just like goes home and starts just like every, all of them need to just change their name to internal medicine and blood analysis, whatever you call that, whatever a blood doctor's called and just see yeah, or blood doctor. We don't do hormones going away, then free up physiatrists. So then, okay, they're going to get with the urology uh, association. They're all going to get trained in urology and they're gonna become experts at hormones. And their, their whole entire focus is gonna be done on TBI as a whole of medicine thing of its own specialty. It has to be broken up, so you just break out, okay, I'm a PMNR doctor with uh, NE certification, neuroendocrine. Okay, throw that on there, boom, now you're the guy. And, and get just one per state at you know starting and just get it done so then you have one single person who then can train everybody else to then focus on it. um there has to be a structure and we just can't have patients having to like clobber up doctors around the country like 10 of them who even know what the fuck they're doing so um i hope this helps and I, this is like high level kind of stuff your action, I think you're a fucking patient listening to this, doesn't have a doctor. Um, I have a group. Go into any of the uh, comment boxes that I've got, or the description boxes, whatever. Um, go on to Facebook, TRT for Warriors, look it up, join the group. There's a, a, a link that's there. All the good doctors are in there. Um, I got a list. Canada, UK, America, all the docs. Every place that you possibly could go who does this work, top doctors, in my opinion, Dr. Bradford Garner, Dr. Eric Fetty, Dr. Joe Clark, um, Dr. Keith Nichols, Dr. Tamara Wexler. Um, those are kind of like the, the independent people uh, that I personally and and sending people to there's a ton of other places the list is exhaustive um, but the main thing is you want someone one who understands that tbi is an inflammation and neuroendocrine illness it is not a mental illness and that anyone selling single cures is selling a scam and you can't just go on amazon and i'm gonna buy some supplements and i'm gonna heal my tbi no, not how it works. You got to work with an expert. It's got to be teamed with anesthesia. It's, you have to have pain management. You have to have a whole plethora of TBI medications and then a whole host of different physical therapy and different um, things that you personally will need. And that only can be done by like a legit doc who knows what they're doing. Um, and those are the people, they all do telemedicine all over the country and they're willing to help you. Um, for people in the UK, there's literally three freaking clinics in your entire flipping country until I get there and I can help out and like start more. Um, you've got Balance My Hormones UK. Um, you have the Men's Health Clinic UK. And you've got Ledgers and Alphagenics with Ross Tompkins. That's what you got. <laughs> That's that is what you were limited to in the UK. Um, good luck. Balance is great. I mean, they're fantastic, but it's you know, 
the, the system of the UK is a lot, lot more problematic. Um, the Canada list is pretty small, and I've you'll have to search it on the group and then find out what's in there for the different Canadian clinics. There's two of them, so um, I think Steinberg, something like that, urology, in uh, in Montreal, and then True Balance, and. I think Evolve is a Canadian company. I I can't remember for the life of me. I think they're on the border of Michigan or something weird. I don't know. I thought they were treating Canadian patients. But in any case, those reaction items, if you are a patient, um, you, you, you have to find the right people. You have to get the right evaluations. You have to get the right treatment. If you just go to like a regular doctor, they're just going to abuse you. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, and as a foundational level, as I am writing articles and I'm doing podcasts and that sort of thing, I need your help to go on givesend.go.com slash Brad Med, B-R-A-D Med, M-E-D. I need your donations to help me for my medication because I have a $131 medication bill every single month that has to be filled. I lost some tenants and to do this content and to um, make articles and eventually go back to college, eventually become a doctor myself. I will need your support to do this. I'm just a TBI patient, and I don't got benefits, and I don't got nothing. So I need some help to actually do that, to be successful, which means I need your support. I truly appreciate everybody for taking the time to listen to this. I hope that it's helped give you some ideas about what to do and how to focus your attention on one, your actions if your patient is like getting the right treatment, and then also our foundational pieces of we've got to unfuck this system. We can't have ER doctors as like the top people for TBI because they don't not the top people for TBI. They fix problems in the instant. They are not long-term care people. It's not their job, and it's also not the job of family practice. I would like to change change that, but it is not their job. And although some of them can and they do. But it is not their job, and they're, it's not their job to be TPI experts, very, very much. So, um, one, it is too difficult to pack that into family practice, and um, I'm going to keep going on. So, uh, everybody have an awesome week, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.